Welcome back to the JSFL Week 6. We got a Sunday 415 game coming your way. The 1 and 4. Kansas City win hosts the 2 and 3. Detroit Power. Detroit, two new people off the injury reserve. Sammy Hansen and Amadi Erickson return. One new injury. Hugo Bell, the left guard, out till the championship round. And then for the Kansas City win, two new injuries, both backups. Dominic Trabai back till week 11, and Kyle Shooter will be back week 9. Also on top of that, they still have uh, Owen Dickerson out for the season, Wesley Francis out till next week, along with Joseph Carousel, Andrew Webb out till week 9, and Craig Snyder out till week 11. But a good game. Kansas City may be injured, but they can match up, and they've been dominant. Not dominant, but they've put up a lot of good fights against a lot of good teams. So I'm interested to see what they do today. But without further ado, let's bring it to your commentators. This, it's always about the secondary. Can they handle a passing attack and make a few plays? Here's the punter Bradley Pinion on to get us started. And off we go from Tampa. This will be fielded at the 6. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So here are the Cowboys now ready to go on offense for the first time. And leading them, Charles, their quarterback, their field general. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way and he sees himself in an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator say right off the top, he's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line. Hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Now they'll run on the draw. Two yards the game there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout the season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. And they'll look to avoid an early three and out here on third and four. <laughs> Looking to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. So they stopped him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. I think defensively you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle it, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that <laughs> and this is a way it's a high kick and he got all of it 
And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. And a look here at their go-to guy under center. And what I enjoyed watching this week when we had a chance to watch them at practice, the easy camaraderie that he has with his offense. A lot of respect. A lot of respect, and frankly, I thought it spilled over to the defense. All the defensive guys were coming over and teasing and jerking with him. You can tell they respect the heck out of him and really want to play well for him. before being stopped at the 28. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches. So if they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the second down. Line of scrimmage, the 28 now as they come up on second and a couple. Going to give this time to the tailback. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. And this O-line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. Strength trying to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. First down. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, stepping back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. Well, look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing the fourth for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they look at the sideline taking themselves and expressing. Just keep doing it. We're doing pretty well. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 20-yard line. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep, and that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stay home, and they'll stop him behind the line. They wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be second and 11. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. Here's second and 11. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. Now we're going to get a timeout. Here's we've got an injured Buccaneer. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Here we go. 
to throw now on first down. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. And the big meat on the D-line, we'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Second and ten. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're making a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. <laughs> They'll set up a throw. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. But it's about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal, that's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. So on fourth down, on comes the Buccaneer kicker, Matt Gay. This one from 35 yards away. Gay's kick is good. And the Bucs take a 3-0 lead. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like... Whew, they only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. And they'll run him here. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. 11 yards and a Cowboy first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now they'll run it on the toss. And some room to work. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Defense. Too much extracurricular there. When you have a game with a lot of contact, tensions are going to run pretty high. You're going to be emotional, but you have to harness it somehow. And he didn't on that play. Now a handoff here to his running back. 
Sharp move, but can't find much space. Drop just inside the 20. They give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. And that's one reason you have to blitz even on run downs. It confuses the blocking assignments and doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now they'll run on the draw. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. A 10-yard touchdown run. And the Cowboys have taken the lead. And they drew up the counter there. It worked. They're glad they drew up the counter. And a lot of times what you're trying to do is just simply get the defense moving in one direction. It doesn't take much. Even one step's enough. Get them going in one direction and then cut back against the grain and let your running back finish it off and get the work done. Kai Forbath on for the extra point. He's got it. They'll see that opening drive field goal and raise it a touchdown, and that makes it 7-3. to three. So that drive, four plays, and it was finished off with a 10-yard touchdown scamper. Format to send it away now following the touchdown. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they had a long drive last time, but they had to settle for a field goal. And I'm sure that's how it felt to them, settling. They probably should have gotten in the end zone. And yeah, not odd, not joy, right? Because that's what you get when you put the ball in the end zone. But there are benefits to that type of a long drive. Your defense gets a chance to take a break, adjust a little bit, maybe get themselves ready to get back out on the field and play a little bit better. So they'll take the benefit even though they wanted the six points. And maybe wore down the other defense. We'll see. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. The defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game, and that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. Here we go on second and 12. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Not sure what you're thinking here, partner, but I believe the officials have done a nice job here getting together and then coming out and indicating that there was a receiver in the area. Absolutely, and he was in the area. Correct call made, no grounding. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. They'll drop the throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's caught inside the 30. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. quite a bit of air underneath that touchdown pass. And of course, we knew that he had the strong arm. That part was easy. You can see that throughout his college career. But what you want to know about a rookie is when the pressure's on, can you throw a touch? He just did right there. And boy, it was pretty. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And 
and it's thrown. That makes the lead 10-7. To his 75-yard scoring drive on just three plays. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Following a touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards, up to the 27-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Here's Gay now to add the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. So not only the cough-up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. Here's the kickoff now as they'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This one taken just inside the 10. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Here's the Dallas offense now heading back out onto the field. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it, but you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it, and that's what you don't want to do. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Gonna give this time to the tailback. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. 
Here's the second and seven. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw it, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot him at the 44. The goal of the wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. After one, 17 7 is our score. Second and nine down. Rush coming and he's taken down. But that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. The Bucs with an extra defender now in the secondary here on third down. <laughs> now back to throw. He's going to go for a big play downfield. That's caught inside the 20. A big play here for the Cowboys. 48 yards. Obviously, they're not where they want to be right now on the scoreboard. Big plays like that, though, that'll trend them in the right direction. Yeah, a few more like that, they'll be right back in the game. And if they can continue to do that, maybe they'll inspire their defense as well to get a few stops. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Give him maybe a yard, quite the opposite from the previous big gainer. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs. Hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Back to throw here. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. And we have to give credit to him for buying time and extending the play. But you know, there's some really upset defenders on that one. They thought that they had him. Instead, he was coated in Teflon and got away. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Goodness, it'll be a disastrous loss on the play, and that'll bring up a second and goal. That makes no sense. You've got to understand your situation. You're in a goal and goal situation, and instead you're dancing around, and instead of staying at least where you were, you end up losing yards for your team. First down, a bit of a disaster, and now on second and goal, back even further. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. They get five on the run, but it leaves them with a tough third and goal forthcoming. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? He'll drop to throw. Firing 
quickly here, and that's complete. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. the Cowboys punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll be upended after a gain of five up to the 25-yard line. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, if you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half as some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Second and five. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of the quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. This quarterback now... 7 of 10 here in this first half, and he's got a first and 10. He'll look to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. They're going to look to throw. Now he'll let it go deep right side. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. He was out there waving his arm, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. But all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer, just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now, here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. Now, second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. This secondary has been roasted in this first half, but they get a measure of revenge there. Nice play on the deep ball. Yeah, they're going to need a few more plays like that in order to get their confidence fully back, but that's one step in the proper direction. The Bucks on third down. They've been okay two for three thus far. This is third and ten. They'll look to throw here. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys 42. Nice catch right there. Brings him out in the sentence. When in doubt, 
find your veterans. We used to laugh back in the day when they would call guys like him crafty veterans. You, know, you get up in your 30s, you're still playing receiver, but you're around that long at that position, you're doing something right. right. Just remember this, when he was young, he thought the crafty veteran was simply a guy who couldn't run anymore. Now he understands a little bit better. So from Cowboy territory now, here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Back to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. A gain of eight there on the eighth play of the drive. That's a staple of this offense. Drag round to the tight end. Yeah, he's only able to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective game nonetheless. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Second and two. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. This defense can use some more of these types of plays. How about him reading it, driving on the football, and he's right there for the pass breakup. The Bucks on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll set up to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. That'll put it right at 100 yards receiving in this first half alone. It's a first down. Gotta say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. This quarterback now, 11 of 17 passing thus far. He's got his guys a first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. He'll look to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. They'll have highlights and analysis. Under pressure and down he goes. They sack him back at the 36. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it. He was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. It'll be spotted on the right hash. A 52-yard attempt. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will open the lead up now to 20-7. to seven. So they get the field goal, but that was a 14-play drive to get three. It sounds like you're going negative on I was. I was. It sounds like, it sounds like you're thinking a three is just not that good. And people say that we're negative sometimes. <laughs> so. Well, here's the deal. Getting the three is good. Obviously, you would think on a 14-point drive, you're going to get six out of it. But that type of a drive can pay dividends later on because you might wear the defense down. Hunter Pinion now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it up to the 25 on the touchback. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's, he's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times, but as you pointed out, 
Use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. And he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? They'll try and start this drive in the air. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. Six complete. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. And the box with an extra defender of the secondary now on third down. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A gain of 22. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Give him 10 there, good enough for a Cowboy first down. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left to the second quarter. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. This from 54 yards away. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of a long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just gonna see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. So we've reached the intermission, and what right now is a 13-point game. As we send you a stone throw away across I-4 to Orlando, they're standing by as Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach?
The Bucs with the lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. This one taken just inside the 10. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. They'll come out throwing here on first down. He's going to launch this thing way right down. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 30 before being taken down. That one good for 37 yards. When you had all halftime to think about what you wanted to do to start the second half, they came out with a big one. Does that not beg the question? What was happening in the other locker room at halftime? Was that the one play they didn't cover as a possibility? Because they just gave up a big, big game. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. And again this time to the tailback. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Let's go, Let's go. <laughs> throw over the middle, taken in. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. That play was well covered. Just tried to check it down. Unfortunately, not able to find any yardage on that one. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This from 54 yards away. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And that will swell the lead to 16. So three field goals that he's in. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick. Right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Cowboys offense now, they head out for their first possession of the second half. They're down in this game, a chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know in the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use. Just something to get you off to a quick start. <laughs> They'll look to throw now on first down. They'll roll him out right. They'll run it. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 
opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. And pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. They try a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Here's second and eight. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 44-yard line. Slam route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. The last run got nine. That leaves him with second and a yard. Now a handoff here to his running back. And this time he's not going anywhere. They'll get him down right at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to throw up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. They missed a field goal on their last drive. Here they need something to even get into field goal range on third down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 12-yard line. They brought in a heavy set on third down, and that usually means running play, but we have seen them throw out of that formation. And sure enough, they snuck the tight end out on that one, wound up hitting him for a first down. Showed some tough running, but they'll drop him at the five-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. Gonna give this time to the tailback. And he'll get in. Touchdown. Cowboys, a five-yard touchdown run as his guys are able to pull a bit closer. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Jason Garrett electing for his guys to try for two. They'll look to throw. And this is going to be caught. So they do get it. 
And the two points, now they're back down to a one-score deficit. And that almost makes it a brand-new ball game. Now it's a one-score affair after they get the two. And you have to know they were holding their breath on the two-point play because they had to have it to get it within the range that you just talked about. Dialed up their two-point play, it worked. Now they're feeling like they've got a shot at this one. Format to send it away now following the touchdown. This will be taken about the 12. And he's going to be stopped here with a penalty marker on the field. I'm not sure what this is about. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. Here now is second and ten again for the 41. Looking to throw. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against them. Now after the holding call, here, second and 20. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Well, it was second long, now it's third and even longer. They're going in the wrong direction here. Because they're moving exactly the way they want to, but you're exactly right. Definitely going in the wrong direction for the offensive guys. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. That's certainly playing down a distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. Here's Bradley Pinion now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he gets this away. Look at this. This is a good one. And he didn't quite have the bank spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. And out now come the Cowboys. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. It's a gain of 16 in the Dallas first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", 6'5", and up. 
A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Oh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible to something a little more advantageous. play fake he'll look to throw wide open receiver complete and this is going to lead to another first down as the tackles made at the box 42 the door for any offense versus his own defense find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it they did it well there perfectly executed crossing route So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Now they'll run on the draw. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. And he'll give it here to his running back. Spins by. There he goes, left side. Touchdown, Cowboys. A great effort there. His second touchdown of the afternoon as his guys have cut the lead down to two. He's having a nice little game. Maybe already has an eye on that third touchdown. And how about what our producer, Christian McLeod, likes to say when they've scored touchdowns like this? He's put a tent up in Touchdown City. And now Jason Garrett electing for his guys to try for two. They'll try and throw for it. Goes right side. And he's got it. So they went ahead and went for two to tie the game, and it works out. Still time to work with on the clock, but they wanted to tie now, and they got it. And I love their aggressiveness. Go ahead and get it done. Get the game tied. Now your team has the momentum, and you're staring across the field saying, let's see if you can match us. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This will be fielded at the 6. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, where the game this close you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now but they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play <laughs> they'll look to throw and nowhere to fit that football in it's knocked away and incomplete it's always a battle. Who's going to run on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you get the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Second and 10. Quick hitter here. It's complete. That's good for a Buccaneer first to pick up of 12 yards. A 
This quarterback now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. They'll set up a throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. And that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. First down pass play, second and three. On play action, no throw. And he finds a man on a crossing route. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys 33. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. So from Cowboy territory now, here's first and 10, down at the 33. They'll drop the throw. Over the middle, it's complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 14 yards there in the Buccaneer, first down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. And good downhill running. He's got six yards down to the 13. And that's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. And they'll try the jet sweep here. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. The Bucks on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and four. That's complete right around the eight. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. And he pulls it in for the Buccaneer touchdown. A five-yard touchdown. And there Break the tie and move out in front here in this fourth quarter. Obviously a huge touchdown for their team, but a big touchdown for a rookie quarterback here to be able to break the tie in the fourth quarter. And he just shook off all the pressure, too, because when you think about it, tie ball game, rookie quarterback, most of them are thinking, don't make a mistake. Instead, this young man just said, I'll make a play. <laughs> Extra point by Gain is up and good. And they will take a seven-point lead. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it ends with a touchdown for the Bucs.
Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offensive tumble. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Out to his left. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. And no matter what the situation, the O-line just hates that because they feel like they didn't protect little brother back there, right? Man, that's just so difficult for them because just think about every single play. When you decide to throw the football, you're dealing with some of the best athletes on the planet. You're talking about guys, if they weren't playing football, they'd be starring in the NBA at power forward. It's a really difficult task. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Now, a man open down the middle of the field. A good pick up there, 13 yards as they get closer for third down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Out of the gun now on third down. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's going to be taken down here, still a couple yards short of the first. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver. We asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. Now, now comes the Cowboys punter as he's on here to punt it away. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now, heading back out onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would, because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. A nice looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40 yard line. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for them there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. So quickly, all the way up at the 40-yard line. Here we go, D. Here come again. Going to give this time to the tailback. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make this a second and 13. This offense has had a lot to like in this game. I don't know that that last play, though, is going to make the highlight reel. It's not going to make the highlight reel. But it will be the focus of the film session that a team has to sit through. I've sat through those before. Never any fun. You're always excited about your good plays. And they actually fast forward through those. All right, that was good. All right, great. They get to the bad ones and really illuminate them. Not cool. Here's a quick hitch route and the throw complete. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. I was laughing.
from people saying, what's the toughest route to defend? And it might any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. The kicker here is complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. So they did not bring pressure, and turns out probably a bad idea. Yeah, he had time to stand in the pocket and deliver a strike. So I'm wondering if they're going to note that, and next time just go ahead and bring that pressure. So from Cowboy territory now, here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Oh, no, he lost the football. And the defense not able to get it. From a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. And you probably talk about this training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. take it all the way down and just take the delay. Offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Still first down. The delay of game backs him up five, first and 15. Back to throw again. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Going with a dime look on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That will have them to disrupt the play. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Now he'll run on the draw and able to work his way down to the 16. That will go as a pickup of seven on the seventh play of the drive. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around a training facility for an entire week. Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying it around <laughs> campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. Now he's wrapped up, taken down, back in the 25. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And again, knocks this one through. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. A big one there. That gives them a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, get a little time off the clock. Put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender... You go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us.
the punter pinion now to kick this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. Solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. So now the Cowboys down by 10. And time, a huge factor. They'll need a score here and also likely an onside kick recovery. But first things first, first and 10. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Back to throw here. And that is incomplete. And that right there, his first incompletion of the game, pretty remarkable. So let's start talking about all-time records because with that incompletion, maybe over a two-game sequence or maybe starts a new streak now because Ryan Tannehill, over two games, hit 25 straight. Now, the incompletion when we take this record out of play. But Mark Brunel, who's a Washington, 22 straight completions to start a game. This guy's on fire. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. Now the Cowboys going to burn the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. but not before picking up the first. Eighth catch for him now. He's been a big factor, and it's a first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. He'll drop to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch it unfold, I remember the expression that I've heard. Maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Back to throw now on second and ten. And this is incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield as it turned out. Couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Now back to throw. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 36. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. 17 yards on the play there, and the Cowboys have a first down. The Cowboys going to use their second timeout now as they'll stop them with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Whether it's a touchdown or a field goal, whatever it is, they need to score quickly here on first down. Back to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Exactly what they were looking for. They've been giving up yards. They've been letting them drive right downfield, but they got a sack right there. How about that for a little bit of revenge? figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. 
They're going to look to throw. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield complete. And he is into the end zone for the touchdown. So they still need a miracle. Well, the clock where it's at, but they get one piece to the puzzle done. Still have hope. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They had the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like... Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it doesn't you gotta, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Format to add the extra point. And the lead is down to a field goal now. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it's capped off with a Cowboys touchdown. So with 14 seconds on the clock, they've got to go with the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered by the hand seam. And that should just about put a capper on this one. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though, now. This one's as good as over. They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now this game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. Victory formation now for the Buccaneers. Down to a knee they go. So fire the cannons. It's a victory here for Tampa Bay. And it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises. Really, both sides did. But they did what they needed to do at home to get the win. Yeah, they really had to grind this one out, didn't they? Because nothing came easy. Every snap was a major league brawl. They had to win at the line of scrimmage, win downfield. They got all those things accomplished. But to win a close one like this, you know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? But those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.